since we're running a little bit behind. Um, I'd like to introduce you now to Sarah Miller and Naveen Ismail, I don't know if I pronounce that right, Naveen, um, from Smith College, and they will talk about best management practices. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Sarah Miller. I am a junior in the engineering department at Smith College, and today I will be presenting research from Professor Naveen Ismail's lab, Best Management Practices, the Application of Mycoremediation to Reduce E. coli in Runoff. Uh, so best management practice is a practice that inhibits or removes pollution from a non-point source of pollution. We're focusing on agricultural runoff as the non-point source of pollution, which can introduce bacteria, pesticides, and other contaminants to local bodies of water. Um, and to manage the agricultural runoff, we are focusing on a bioretention basin, which is a type of best management practice that uses filtration methods enhanced with uh, vegetation. Um, for our bioretention basin, we are using mushroom mycelium as our vegetation type. And you can see on, uh, in this image on the right, an example of a bioretention basin in practice. So during a storm event, you can see that the bioretention basin is flooded with uh, runoff and then even just 24 hours later that runoff has been filtered and the basin is now clear. Um, and then on the left you can see a cross section of a bioretention basin where uh, the runoff flows through the pipe over the rocks and then through the plants through the sedimentary layers um, that filters the water and then it flows out through the base. Uh, so we have seen that fungal mycelium uh, attacks by bacteria by releasing antibiotics um, and toxins and it has even been shown to use bacteria as a source of nitrogen and carbon but particularly in nutrient deficient environments. Um, certain, uh, certain species of fungi have even um, been capable of degrading harmful toxins and bacteria by stimulating microbial communities. Um, for, uh, so this is a timeline of this research. It began as course-based research at, in an upper level engineering elective course at Smith College with support um, by Phil Crosby of Fungi Ally. Um, and you can see that it has gone uh, through many different iterations. We began with um, testing different filtration methods of this uh, runoff. So we have coffee filters, steel filters, uh, brass filters, and we also have used different types of systems. So we have stacked Nalgene's, we have um, some bags full of mycelium, as well as our column designs with packed mycelium. Um, and many students over the years have contributed their time and hard work towards this project. Uh, for our bioretention basin, we chose to use a uh, pearl oyster mushroom mycelium. Um, because we know that it is highly popular among mushroom growers in the Northeast region. Uh, these mushroom growers have a high interest in finding usage for um, the spent substrate blocks, which is left over after growing mushrooms, um, because it is otherwise just a, a waste stream. Uh, and we also know that pearl oyster mushrooms are highly uh, popular in the marketplace. Um, we also uh, have seen that previous research on the capacities of pearl oyster mycelium finds that it's excellent at uh, removing and filtering microbial pollutants, specifically E. coli, uh, from water. And you can see on, uh, in the image, this is one of our mycelium blocks. It is pearl oyster mycelium and it's inoculated on sawdust. Um, our first objective for this research was to test the functionality of our uh, newly designed packed columns. Um, and you can see in the image that we have a transparent uh, PVC body with fitted endings. Uh, there is a fitted inlet for the hoses that uh, are in the 
uh, carboids filled with the synthetic stormwater that, that allows them to flow through the columns. And then there is an inlet in the base that allows the, uh, the water to um, exit the column after being filtered. We are also uh, testing to determine the efficacy of using mycelium to remove E. coli from synthetic stormwater, specifically over multiple storm events. Um, and in this image, you can see that three of, their, of these columns are, are mycelium packed columns, which are our experimental columns. One of the columns is a control column. And then we have two of our 20 liter carboys, which are filled with spiked synthetic stormwater. Um, so the one of our controls, the first control is the control carboy that contains the synthetic stormwater spiked with E. coli. And that has the same concentration of E. coli as what flows through the uh, columns in the experiments. And then our second is the control column that is identical in cross section to the, the uh, experimental columns with the exception that the 15 centimeter layer uh, has sawdust um, instead of the 15 centimeters of packed mycelium. Um, and in this cross-section of the design of the columns here, you can see that the E. coli flows through the top, down through the different layers, and out through the bottom. So we have the first layer that is 15 centimeters of um, pearl oyster mycelium inoculated on spent sawdust, 10 centimeters of soil, and 5 centimeters of fine-grained sand. Um, our initial E. coli spike amount was 10 to the 6 colony forming units per 1 milliliter of uh, sample um, with a flow rate of 1 liter per hour for 6 hours. Um, each of the experiments we conducted included 3 to 4 storm events where a storm event lasts 24 hours. Six of those hours are the wetting period where the water is flowing through the col columns, and that is followed by an 18 hour drying period in which there is no water flowing through the columns. Um, in between each of our experiments, we had a drying period of about five to eight days in which we did not flow any water through the columns. Um, in this top image, you can see uh, our uh, sample processing setup. So we use serial dilutions to uh, dilute the samples. Um, and then we did uh, membrane filtration. And then we placed the filters with the E. coli onto the MTEC plates here, which were then uh, incubated for 24 hours. Um, this bottom image is one of our MTEC plates with the filter with the E. coli colonies. Each of the purple dots represents one E. coli colony. Um, from this, we are able to count how many E. coli colonies are present um, on the filter, and we can calculate the concentration in the filter or in the sample. Um, so here's my first graph. This is from our first experiment. And on the uh, x-axis here, you can see we have storm events. So for this first experiment, we had three storm events total. And then on the y-axis, we have C over C naught, which is the concentration in the sample uh, divided by the initial concentration of E. coli colonies in uh, the control. Uh, the blue bars on the graph are our controls. So the light blue is the control carboy, and the dark blue is the uh, control column containing sawdust. And then the three shades of green are each uh, one of our mycelium packed columns. And for this first experiment, we saw approximately one log of additional removal by the E. coli, of the E. coli by the mycelium columns. And this is really what we're looking for when we're um, uh, researching microbial inactivation, um, because this one log of removal indicates that there is a change in the um, concentration, and that's just a um, factor of difference between the experiment, experimental columns and the controls. Um, for this second graph, um, we have our second experiment. So again, the 
first three storm events on this base are from the first, and then we had a drying period of about five to eight days before we began our second experiment, which had storm events four through six. Um, and you can see that um, in the fourth through the sixth storm events, there was an increase in removal by the um, mycelium packed columns, which are the green bars again. Um, and there is little change in the controls at this point. Um, and then for this final graph, um, we have our third experiment, which are storm events seven through 10. Um, and we, again, we had about five to eight days of a drying period between the second experiment and the third experiment. Um, and in this third experiment, you can see that there is a decrease in removal by the E. coli colonies. As you can see, the, the, the green bars on the graph are um, decreasing in, in length over time. And we did observe an increase in removal by the control column containing sawdust. And that is the um, blue bar on the graph. Um, we also noticed after looking at these three experiments that the last storm event of each experiment, so storm events three, six, and 10, that the, um, there is a decrease in performance by the mycelium packed columns. Um, and we hypothesize that this is caused by a higher saturation in the columns at this point in each experiment. Um, which is uh, reset by the drying periods in between the experiments. Um, so for uh, the first seven storm events, we observed approximately one log of additional removal of E. coli by the mycelium packed columns as compared to the controls in the experiment. Um, however, in the remainder of the storm events, um, which are storm events eight through 10, um, we did not see uh, more removal of E. coli by the mycelium columns than the controls. Um, in addition to this, we also saw the control column containing the sawdust uh, had an increase of E. coli removal over time, which we hypothesized um, was caused by a growth in the sawdust at some point in the experimental process, which resulted in the additional activation inactivation of E. coli. Um, we did not test the sawdust at, uh, in time um, to see what, to identify what that growth might have been. However, from previous research, uh, sawdust should not be removing um, E. coli from synthetic stormwater. Um, we also saw that there was very little mycelium growth in the test columns after the first couple days in the experiment, particularly um, in storm events one through, through two, we observed some mycelium growth. However, after that, there was very little to no mycelium growth observed. And we hypothesize that this also may have contributed to uh, a decline in the efficacy of the mycelium packed columns to remove E. coli from the synthetic stormwater. Um, in this image, you can see that there is a red circle around this top of this layer, and that those white spores in that circle are what we look, we look for to see mycelium growth. That's this mycelium growth. Um, and you can see it's very little just at the very top of the layer, um, but we would expect it to extend throughout the layer over time as the mycelium continues to grow. However, we did not uh, observe that. Um, in the future, we plan to uh, design a new system that um, better uh, suits mycelium cultivation um, by creating more optimal growing conditions for the mycelium, as well as to better mimic field conditions um, that the bioretention basin we are designing would be implemented. Uh, we also will continue to investigate um, the efficacy of using mycelium to remove E. coli from synthetic stormwater um, long term. Um, we, we hope to use this research um, on uh, mycelium to uh, implement bioretention basins um, to reduce the input of E. coli um, from agricultural runoff into local bodies of water. Um, we hope to uh, uh, improve the quality of water in these local bodies of water by preventing that E. coli from 
flowing in, uh, into local bodies of water from agricultural runoff. Uh, we also hope to partner with local mushroom growers uh, to find uh, beneficial usage for the spent mushroom blocks uh, because they take a lot of time and energy for mushroom growers to manage as well as a lot of space to compost the blocks. Uh, and, and if we can find a beneficial use for these um, mycelium blocks, we would be creating a circular economy um, for, for the blocks to find a better usage. Um, uh, I would like to acknowledge that this work is being funded by Smith College Picker Fellowship. Uh, we would like to thank um, from Smith College, uh, Mark Anderson, Sue Froelich, Dale Renfro, Eric Jensen, and Gabby Immerman for project support. Um, I would also like to acknowledge the contributions and past work of all past students, uh, including Ojaswi Aryal, Tiana Cooley, Ruth Pemberthy, and Sophia Garcia Carlin. And we would especially like to thank Michael Terra Farm and Fungi Ally for their support and contributions of mycelium. Um, and I would like to open the floor for any questions and comments. That was an excellent presentation. If you can't think of your questions right now, please put them in the